Kicking things off will be Mike Ryle for Waynesburg. It's a booming kick from Ryle. Fielded at the goal line by Witte. And he'll get it out near the 25 yard line. So Drew Saxton and company taking over again at the start of half number two. A terrific year so far by Drew in his freshman campaign. Has already set a Case Freshman single season passing record. Most passing yards in a single season by a Case Freshman. Over 2,000 approaching the 2,500 mark. He's looking over the middle. Lots of time. Boy, does he have some great protection this afternoon. Rolling out, and he'll run out of bounds near the 30. That's something we saw a lot of from Drew in the first half as well. He had 35 yards on the ground, 28 net yards across four carries. No designed runs. We used to see a lot of that when Rob Kudo was the starting quarterback. He, of course, graduated last year. They would run a fair number of run pass options and Rob would keep it and Saxton has uh, made everything happen on the ground today through improvisation second and nine from the 28 Fan is the motion man Sun beating down behind Saxton as he dumps it off to Fan he shimmies his way to about the 31 before he's decked by Justin Wilco Fan was the top target in the first half. That's his eighth reception. Twice as many as the leading receiver for Waynesburg. Nick Moretti had four. It's five wide with Turkovsky in the backfield. There's been a turnstile in behind Drew Saxton this afternoon. Third and six. Pass to Spitali. He's got a first down out to the 45. Well, that's good news for Case, but some good news for Waynesburg as well. Tyler Smith is back on the field for the Yellow Jackets. The outside linebacker and this team's leading tackler left the field with an injury earlier today. He has returned. First and 10 from the 45. 10 on the play clock as Saxton and the Spartans start to move. Drew steps up, tosses to Fan, and he's got it at about the 49-yard line. Stop made by Vashon Graham. Referee indicating that that ball was tipped. It was the umpire who had that. Mordell Kelly in the defensive backfield. Your umpire today indicating that ball was tipped on the way to Fan, but he still hauled it in. Will Van Norman setting up in his stance, a three down lineman set up with three linebackers as well. 3-3-5 three, three, for Waynesburg. That goes to Morgan diving and making the grab for another case first down. They have tried to run those little out patterns to Morgan all day today. And Saxon throwing in a tight window has thrown low to Morgan trying to get him to really dive and keep one foot out of bounds, one foot inbounds, making him the really the only man able to get to these footballs. It's a tough catch for Morgan, but he's the only man who can get to those balls and he makes the catch there. First and 10 from the 42. Tarkovsky has some room and he knifes his way out to the 35. And they've run those little out patterns to Morgan trying to get him a little bit of separation from Justin Wilco. Sean Graham has been on him at times today. Brennan Seifek, they've kind of rotated guys in and out against Morgan, the top target for Saxton. Second and three from the 35. First play of the second half. That's a catch by DeFrancesco. He juggled it and hung on. He's got the first down at the 26. 
He looked like he might have dropped that football, but just barely got his hands underneath and scooped it up before it could hit the turf. Luke DeFrancesco. UAA Offensive Player of the Week last week. Four receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown catch. First and 10 from the 26. Tchaikovsky in the left hip of Drew Saxton. The pass goes to Tchaikovsky. He will race into the end zone for a touchdown. Tchaikovsky wheels out to the left. Nobody covers him. And it's a quick 30-yard scamper to pay dirt. Outrunning Tyler Smith and the Spartans up 23 to 10. Robertson Albrecht on the PAT. He remains perfect today. Drew Saxon has three TD passes to three targets. Kyle Turkovsky with the latest. And the Spartans with a 24-10 lead. They get some cushion opening the second half. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Kyle Turkovsky picks up his first Spartans touchdown and Case with a 24 to 10 lead over Waynesburg. And the running back on a little wheel pattern out to the left and there was nobody stopping him. Three touchdown passes on the day for Drew Saxton. He's hit Spitali, Fan, and now Turkovsky out of the backfield. Kyle Turkovsky, the sophomore out of North Huntingdon, Pennsylvania. In for the first time this year. James Jackson scoops it up at the 15. Number 15 takes it about seven, eight yards before he's eventually wrestled out of bounds. On the stop for the Spartans, Brent Carney along with Josh Smith. Tyler Perone to get the offense going once again. We saw a lot of Jordan Taylor and Scott Bauman in behind Perone at the end of the first half, but Chad Walker will return as the tailback for Waynesburg. This is a vital drive for the Yellow Jackets who have made a habit of coming back late in games. Perone gives to, looks like, not Jawan Jones, thought it was number two at first. It's number seven, Dorian Hardy, the sophomore out of Taylor Alderdice High School. That is a star-studded high school historically. Curtis Martin, Taylor Alderdice grad. Rap star Wiz Khalifa. Couple of mayors of Pittsburgh, Murray Chass as well for those Baseball fans, Murray Chass in the Baseball Hall of Fame is a winner of the Taylor Spink Award for exceptional baseball writing. They all went to Taylor Alderdice High School in Pittsburgh. The late Mac Miller as well went to Taylor Alderdice. As did Dorian Hardy, wide out for these Waynesburg University Yellow Jackets. Third and two from the 31. The sun pouring into DeSanto Field as Perone gets the shotgun snap and fires it to Cole Booth, incomplete. Colin Schuster, who was injured earlier in this game, back in coverage, and he was hand-checking with Booth, who could not get the head turned around in time. Looked like the ball might have been tipped as well on its way there. 
And so it's fourth down, and the punting unit will come out. And a quick three and out. Spartans will send two back to receive this punt. Mario Robina and Justin Fan. Punt from Nick Gibson. Low line drive. Robina from the 34. Tripped up at the 44 yard line by Tyler Smith. So Case back to work and they can really slam the door shut on Waynesburg with a score here. Important for Case to come out on top and keep pace with Washington and Jefferson who at last check is leading in the fourth quarter against St. Vincent 33 to nine. Case and Washington and Jefferson tied atop the PAC. And off on the first play, goes nowhere. Zach Hall, the ball carrier. And he was stopped by Garrett Hepner. Looked like Dan Verhovsik on the stop as well. There's Dan, junior out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Second and 11 on a loss of one. Kyle Turkovsky gets a break. Zach Hall returns as the tailback. Saxton's had loads of time this afternoon. He steps up out of the pocket and races his way to a five-yard gain out to the 49-yard line. And the ever-slippery Drew Saxton makes something out of nothing, and it's third and six from the 49. This offense just starting to get oiled up. Third and six from the 49, under eight to play in the third quarter. Saxton evades a tackle, throws it over the middle to DeFrancesco. He slips free, and he's inside to the 10, scampering to the end zone. Drew Saxton escaped, and so did Luke DeFrancesco. The fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon by Drew Saxton is to a fourth different receiver. How about the footwork by both the quarterback and wide receiver and then the foot race won by DeFrancesco. Shedding one arm tackle and getting in for six. Albrecht makes it seven. 31 to 10 case as they try to drive a nail into Waynesburg's coffin this afternoon. Four TD passes by Saxton. Luke DeFrancesco picks up his seventh of the year. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Well, this has been exactly the way the Spartans wanted to start this second half with two touchdowns and one big stop. Drew Saxton finds Kyle Turkovsky. The Spartans stop the Yellow Jackets offense before it can even get in gear. And then Saxton to Luke DeFrancesco for another score. And this one was a beauty. Saxton escaping pressure in the pocket. And then DeFrancesco escaping not one but two tackles on his way to pay dirt. Kickoff handled by Jordan Taylor and taken to about the 26 yard line. Well, the Spartans, as we mentioned, need to keep pace with Washington and Jefferson who 
At the moment, leading St. Vincent 33-9 in the fourth quarter. Looks like they'll put that away and go to 8-1 overall, 7-1 in the PAC. Case's lone loss of the year came to WNJ, and so if both teams win out, then yes, they share the PAC title, but Washington and Jefferson wins the automatic qualifying bid to the NCAA tournament. The Spartans would have to rely on that large bid. Walker on a very short gain up the middle on the first down run. All Case can do is take care of its own business. And the only reason that the Spartans have a shot at the shared PAC title is because Westminster upset Washington and Jefferson earlier this year. And if Case can hang on, and Washington and Jefferson can hang on. It'll be up to Case to win next week against Carnegie Mellon and see if they can get some help from this Waynesburg team who takes on WNJ next week. That pass incomplete. Spartan fans Only wanted field is an a fumble by Juwan Jones. But the ruling on the field as you hear an incomplete forward pass. Little drive summary. Last drive by the Spartans. Three plays, 55 yards for the score. 51 yard pass from Saxton to DeFrancesco, taking up the bulk of those 55 yards. Third and seven from the 33 for Tyler Perrone. Flushed out, Brown in pursuit from behind, and Perrone has to get rid of it. Cameron Brown looking for sack number 15 on the year. Doesn't have any this week. He's had nine and a half in the last three weeks combined and leads all of Division Three in sacks. None there as Perrone escapes and it's fourth down. An unbelievable year for Brown. Three straight PAC and UAA Defensive Player of the Week honors. D3Football.com, team of the week, two of the last three weeks, including last week. And his four-and-a-half sack performance against St. Vincent, the most by a D3 player in a game this year. It's been held in check this afternoon. No sacks just yet. Gibson on the punt, low-line drive. It's Rabina, and a fair catch called. At least that's what the referees are saying. Rabina doesn't remember asking for a fair catch. Somebody saw it, saw a hand gesture that perhaps he didn't intend. And so Case will take Fair over. Fair catch on the punt. First down, Case Western. That'll make it official. Rapino was walking back after trying to slice through the middle of that special teams unit with his arms outstretched next to his shoulders trying to figure out when he signaled for fair catch. And off to Hall. Knifes his way out to the 49 into enemy territory. Still waiting on Colt Morgan to get into the end zone. He's got 16 touchdowns this year. That's among the best in Division Three, And a case single season record. And off to Hall, flag flies. He's got the first down on the ground, but that might be, be negated by some dirty laundry. We've got an injury as well. Holding, offense number 55. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. So a 10-yard penalty, it'll set up second down again. The injury is to Hall, who is pointing at his left hip, and he'll trot off the field just fine. Second and 12, Spartans get backed up to their own 42. Colt Morgan, those... 16 touchdown receptions. Now puts him three behind Andrew Wolf of Washington and Jefferson for the Division Three lead. Wolf 
was one ahead of Morgan coming into today, but he's got two scores in W and J's now victory over St. Vincent. That's gone final 33 to nine. So Case needs the win to keep pace atop the PAC for his share of the conference title. And off right side, this is Donald Day, and he's out to the 50. A caravan in front of him, and it'll set Mitchell's up third time down. Out. Got an injury on the field again. And it looks like Tyler Smith again. So real bad news for Waynesburg. Smith down for the second time today. Case leading 31 to 10, and hopefully Tyler's okay. You wonder if this knocks him out for the rest of the game. The last thing you could imagine that Drew Smith, that uh, Chris Smithley, the head coach of Waynesburg, wants to do is put his star linebacker in a position that he has to miss next week as well against another tough opponent in W and J. He's getting up with a little bit of help. He's walking off the field. Looks like he's either dangling that right arm or grabbing his right leg. Jammed something along the way. It'll be third and three. And Smith exits for the second time this afternoon. Third and three from midfield. Donald Day the third again in the backfield. Four wide set for the Spartans. Four down linemen this time. They switch to a 4-3 for Waynesburg. Hepner coming in pressure. Saxton off the back foot, throws too low, looking for fan. Andrew Brinsick in coverage. And really, that was a forced incompletion on the pressure. Without Smith, Waynesburg switching from a 3-4, which they've played pretty much all afternoon, to a 4-3. And Hepner coming in from inside linebacker, able to get right in the face of Saxton, who couldn't hang in there long enough. So it'll be a punt. Chase Witte to boot it away to Jawan Jones. Witte, who also handles punt returns and kick returns. And over end to Jones, fair catch at the 11 yard line. So the Spartans with a 31-10 lead over Waynesburg. We talked about last drive for the Yellow Jackets being vital. And at this point, for a team that has done so well in coming back in the fourth quarter, this is a drive that could give them an opportunity to get within striking distance in the fourth. All four of Waynesburg's wins have featured terrific fourth quarter performances and three of those four have featured fourth quarter comebacks. Perone on the give to Walker. Waits for, spa for space, finds a little bit of a hole and gets about two yards into the 15. It all started with a come from behind victory against Geneva Waynesburg had lost the first three games at home against Muskingum and Westminster, and then on the road at Bethany, and then against Geneva. They were down 7-0 going into the fourth. Tied it early in the fourth on a 27-yard touchdown catch by Cole Booth, and then on a 13-play, 77-yard drive orchestrated by Tyler Perrone, Waynesburg was able to set up a game-winning field goal by Garrett Horn from 20 yards out with 14 seconds left to win the game. That'll set up third down. No gain, they'll keep it at the 15 yard line. So that was the first comeback. Then at Teal, the following week on the road, they were down 14 to three after the first quarter. Scored 21 unanswered points in route to a 24-21 win. The following week, their third win in a row against Carnegie Mellon. They were down by a touchdown after three quarters. There's one to Nick Moretti down the sideline, and he's got himself a first down past midfield. I don't know how Nick Moretti was given that much space 
but the top target for Tyler Perrone was wide open. Several steps past Josh Smith, and it was Patrick Crossy over the top who came in for the stop. Ball on the Spartans, 47. Well, that next comeback against Carnegie Mellon down by a touchdown going into the fourth. Tied it on an 11-yard touchdown pass to Doje Crum. Go-ahead 35-yard field goal by Garrett Guthrie with under two minutes to play. Andrew Brinsick sealed it with an interception at the end of the fourth quarter. And then we mentioned before, ahead of last week's bye week at St. Vincent, down 10-6 going into the fourth. No touchdowns at all for the Waynesburg offense, and Perrone led a 12-play, 80-yard drive over six and a half minutes, culminating in a nine-yard touchdown pass to Moretti with under five minutes to play to win the game 12-10. They're down 31-10 here, approaching the end of the third quarter. After a big pass to Moretti, he's going big again. Right side, incomplete. Same spot, different target. Schuster in coverage. They were trying to find Jawan Jones. Or check that, Bobby Grishaber. Third down and 10. Taylor in the backfield and three wide. Might be fourth down territory at this juncture. Heavy pressure. Perone in and out of the hands of Dorian Hardy. Maybe a little low, maybe a little behind him, but that's a ball that Hardy needs to grab because he had space in front of him, and it almost looks like he was looking at the green turf ahead of him before he had the football. So Nick Gibson will come out with the punting unit to send this one away and give the ball back to Case at a critical point in this ball game. Mario Rabina, Justin Fan back to receive. There's Rabina in the middle of the 20 yard line. Fan will take it, he'll fair catch it in front of James Jackson inside the 20 at about the 16. Number 20 case. Needs this win to keep pace with W and J, who won today. Case will need to finish off this win and either win next week and win next week against Carnegie Mellon or if they lose, hope for a W and J loss next week against these Yellow Legal Jackets. formation on the defense. There was two number twos that participated during the down. That's a five yard penalty. It'll be enforced from the end of the kick. A very rare penalty on a legal procedure. Zach Hall and Nick Kandlesic were both involved in that special teams play and you can't have two of the same number. They're both number two, as you heard from Stephen Hall, our referee today. Can't have two guys with the same number participating in the same play, and so that resulted in the penalty that gets enforced at the end of the kick. So instead of starting from the 16, Spartans start from their own 11. If they can get into the end zone, this would be their longest drive of the ball game. Up 31-10. They'll hand it off. It is day. Got about two, three maybe, depending on the spot. Umpire Wardell Kelly looked like he gave him almost to the 14. Spotted at the 13, second and eight. Saxton will go from the shotgun. Donald Day the third, the lone man in the backfield. Saxton looking left and firing left. It's caught for a Spartan first down. Out to the 29 yard line and it's Joey Spitali again. All of his time for Saxton. 
the pressure that Waynesburg wants to put on the Case quarterback has just not been there today. It's one of the reasons why they've been such a good passing defense this year because they can get pressure whether they've got three down linemen or four as they have now. Saxon has too much time today. He'll look to Fan. He'll find him. Slips two tackles, spins away, and gets to about the 37-yard line. But we've got a flag in the defensive backfield. Darren Bauer, the field judge, threw it. That's one. That's two. That's almost three tackles evaded. Tyler Smith on that stop. He's returned after leaving the field due to injury for the second time today. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 24. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Justin Wilco called for holding before that pass was released. So the Spartans move it up to the 40-yard line. A minute three left in the third quarter. Case with a 31-10 lead. Saxton now has Kyle Cherkovsky in the backfield. He tossed him a touchdown pass earlier today. Kyle's first. Now Cherkovsky will get it, and he gets about one yard. Stopped by Austin Klein, the senior defensive end. And now Klein is down. Yes. Officials timeout, injury the defense. And there's Klein heading off the field. This has been a physical game, even though we haven't had really any big hits. There have been a lot of minor injuries. Luckily, everybody who's been hurt has come back. Smith, Schuster, gone down and they've returned. Second and eight from the 41. Saxton to Fan. It'll be third and short as we start the fourth quarter. Stop made after the pass by John Glenn Davis, the leader of this defense. And that'll send us to the fourth quarter with the Spartans in the lead, 31 to 10. Drew Saxton has gotten this offense in gear. He's got four touchdown passes to four different targets. And Case tries to close it out when we come back. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Spartans 31, Waynesburg 10. Case driving and with a third and short coming up near midfield. Andrew Lofglass with you inside the broadcast booth at DeSanto Field. Spartans trying to keep pace with Washington and Jefferson, who won today. Remain in a tie atop the PAC. Case would remain in that tie if they win today. They are six and one in conference. The president's now seven and one. Saxton out to fan, and that's a first down. Justin cutting across the mouth of the defense and making his way to the right side. Quick pitch and catch from Saxton to fan for the first down pickup. Drew Saxton has moved the ball well, especially after the really first quarter and a half when he was held in check. The go-ahead touchdown score late in the first half, helping to get him back in gear as DeFrancesco drops that pass. Second down and 10. 
Case offense had been held through the air to 69 yards before an 82-yard drive all through the air at the tail end of the first half, ending in a Justin Fan touchdown catch. Took under a minute and a half to go 82 yards in seven plays. And Saxton has been grooving since then. Turkovsky, the lone man in the backfield. Pressure coming on the four down lineman set. Pass goes to Fan. He's got it. And walks out of bounds before Tyler Smith can hit him. To the 36 yard line. That'll move the chains. Saxton, who finished his high school career sixth in Western Pennsylvania football history in passing yards over 7,000, second in WPIAL history in touchdowns, nearly 100. He tosses over the middle, looking for DeFrancesco, threw his hands a little too hot and nearly picked by Vashon Graham. DeFrancesco might have to get some ice for those fingertips. He'll get rid of the gloves. Maybe that'll help. Get a little feel back. It was a cold start to this game. Temperatures in the low 40s. Really for the first time this year. They've had to play in these conditions. Last week was a bit wet in the victory against Bethany on the road. That helped uh, kind of stifle the passing game for the Spartans. That one's tossed to Morgan. There was some heavy contact, and there's the flag. Brennan Seifik almost certainly going to get flagged for pass interference. He just could not keep up with Morgan. The size difference couldn't have helped. And he was just tugging and pulling on Colt Morgan that entire route. Two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Pass interference, defense number 21. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 18 in the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. So while all that was going on, Tyler Smith gets called for the roughing the passer penalty on Saxton. And the Spartans, either way you slice it, get 15 yards in a first down. Tarkovsky to the left of Saxton, day in behind him. Drew in the shotgun. Looking for Morgan to the pylon. He's got the football, and he's down at the one. Colt Morgan leaping up and grabbing that jump ball up over the top of Brennan Seifik. How about that job by Morgan to come back, wrestle the ball away from Seifik, and stay inbounds. Looked like he was trying to stretch for the pylon and just couldn't get it. Day is the tailback. Tchaikovsky to the left of Saxton. There's Morgan lined up again with Seifik to the left. Saxton looking Morgan's way. He's got it for another Spartan touchdown. Colt Morgan, a case record 17 touchdown receptions this year. And for Drew Saxton this afternoon, five touchdown passes to five different targets. There's the mismatch that has made Case so good in the red zone this year. They're converting in the red zone at about a 94% clip. And one of the reasons is you've got a big time size mismatch with Morgan against just about any DB in this conference. Robertson Albrecht boots that one through. He's perfect today. And Case, 38 to 10, they lead Waynesburg. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. 
visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Colt Morgan with his 17th touchdown reception of the year, the second most touchdown catches in D3 football this year, and a case record. That was number 17 on the year to put the Spartans up 38-10. to 10. Coach Greg Doubleack calls Colt a physical mismatch and a guy who has figured out how to contribute this year in his sophomore season. He didn't quite have the tools in his belt last year to be the force he is this season as a freshman out of Worcester, Ohio, but this year nearing 1,000 yards receiving and setting a case touchdown receptions record. Last year, seven total catches. This year, 17 touchdown receptions. This is Jordan Taylor, the up man, on the return. Give you an update on exactly how many more yards receiving Mr. Morgan needs in order to crack the 1,000 mark. As soon as we get our stats updated, he was 112 yards shy coming into today. 888 yards needed in order to become the fifth 1,000 yard single season receiver in Spartans history. Perone under pressure gets rid of it and there will be a flag for intentional grounding. Cameron Brown nearly had his 15th sack and the only reason he didn't get at least a half sack is because Perone got rid of the football illegally. There was Brown along with Brian Victor. Talk about another guy setting records. Cameron Brown has been an absolute monster this year. Cameron, of course, the son of former Cavs head coach, now Warriors assistant coach Mike Brown, one of the best prepared players you'll see on this team and at this level. Second and 22, the give is to Walker off tackle left. And he gets forced out of bounds, set up third down and long. Cameron Brown got paid about the greatest compliment you can ever be paid by an opposing head coach. Chris Smithley, the head coach of this Waynesburg team, likened him to not only a former teammate, but a former roommate of his, Mike Zerwin. Mike set the NCAA sack record across all levels Back in the mid-2000s, 53 and a half career sacks by Zerwin. Mike later coached at Waynesburg as a graduate assistant with Coach Smithley and then tragically died too young in 2010. That ball passed out to the right. It'll be well short of a first down. A little wrestling going on as Alex Stoy, the tight end, goes out of bounds to set up fourth and short. When Smithley likened Cameron to his former teammate and arguably the greatest pressure rusher in Division Three football history. Chris said, I would never compare them, but when I see a lot of the things Cameron does, it makes me think of Mike. It's quite the tribute. Fourth and two, they're gonna go for it. Perone. On the hand, Walker. Looks like he got stuffed. Maybe a yard shy. And it'll be a turnover on downs. Spartans were loading the box. Everybody and their mother knew that Waynesburg was going to run the football there. They had Perone under center. And they had the jumbo set out. Timeout for measurement. And we'll get a, a timeout for a measurement. It looked like it was a full yard short. Bring the chains out. On the initial 
on the initial look, it looked like they were for sure a full yard short. Might be a generous spot. You heard Stephen Hall, the head referee, hollering for them to get the chains out so they could measure. A little tardy in doing so. Well, let's see. It's short. Short by a few inches. And whether it's a yard or a couple inches, short is short. Case will get the football back on a turnover on downs. Spartans 38, Waynesburg 10. We'll get a change of personnel for the Spartans. Ryan Coolidge is going to take over at quarterback for Case. Donald Day the third, along with Kyle Turkovsky in the backfield. Coolidge the junior out of St. Ignatius College Prep in Chicago, playing in his seventh game off the bench this year. 71% completion rate. One touchdown, one interception. The man who backed up Rob Kuda last year as well. Really is... Third year in a row as the primary backup. Coolidge finds Morgan. Stays on his feet. Knocked out by Tyler Smith at the 36-yard line. Good for a first down. So Drew Saxon's day probably done. Five touchdown passes to five different receivers today. Day has space up the middle, and he slides his way through to the 30. Good pressure coming from behind. It was Brennan Seifik who eventually got to him. Second down and four. Six-yard gain for Day on the first down give. Coolidge looking right. It is caught near the first down sticks by Spitali, and they will give him enough for the first. So another first down heave by Ryan Coolidge. Saxton finishes with five touchdowns, one interception, and 327 yards through the air. He's eclipsed 200 yards in every single game but one. That was last week in the win over Bethany. He had 198 yards in a game with wet conditions. And he's back to his regular tricks. Not much to be had on that run. Also importantly, got his uh, passing percentage rate back up. He had been over 65% in his first six games in the last two 50% and 48.5%. He's over 70% today. Big thanks to our crew today. Brian Trail on the camera. And Shayna Perlman on video replay. Brian Trail, Brian Landers on camera. Our great director, Mike Becker, back with us for another week. Coolidge to Morgan, cuts it back against the grain and gets himself near a first down. Third down and about one out to the 17. Thanks to the Bryans, Shana and Mike for giving you all the sights and sounds of Case Football week in and week out. We've got one more with that exceptional crew coming up next week when the Spartans play the 33rd annual Academic Bowl and they've got Senior Day against their rival, the Time Carnegie out. Mellon University Tartans. Case Western, their first of the half. out for Case. Gives us time to talk about that game a little bit. That has been traditionally not only an important matchup because of the rivalry, but also because of the weight that game has, uh, has had because of the standings. And, and for the Spartans, it really means a lot 
they're going to have to win next week, assuming they finish this one out with a 38-10 lead. They'll have to win next week as well in order to assure themselves at least to share the PAC title. Carnegie Mellon, though, having not its greatest of years, they have lost to Westminster today, 23 to 19. And that drops them to four and four overall, three and four in conference play. That is a game, by the way, that right now is scheduled for two o'clock and that's a little bit up in the air. There is a chance that Spartan soccer, Spartan men's soccer will be hosting an NCAA playoff game next Saturday. There's a handoff to Day, and on third and short, he gets dropped for a loss. Back to the 20, it'll be fourth down. Now, if that's the case, if the Spartans soccer team hosts a game, it'll likely be late in the morning next Saturday or and or early in the afternoon next Saturday, and that would drop a 2 o'clock start back to the early evening potentially. So there may be a change in the schedule, although a case lost today, case soccer team lost today to Carnegie Mellon might hurt their chances. The uh, NCAA committee will announce its seating tomorrow for the NCAA soccer tournament. Robertson Albrecht's field goal is good, case 41. Waynesburg 10, 8.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Case 41, Waynesburg at 10, nearing the end of this one with 8.30 to play in regulation. Ryan Coolidge in his first drive taking over for Drew Saxton drives the team down and sets up a Robertson Albrecht field goal. Albrecht with his second field goal of the day. He's now six of six in this 2018 season. Before the break, we were talking about the potential for next week's game to move times. So if you are marking in your calendar two o'clock next week for the academic bowl between Case and Carnegie Mellon, keep that as a tentative plan as Jawan Jones gets that out near the 29 on the return. Colin Schuster helping out on the stop. Case soccer, Case men's soccer, the number eight team in the nation coming into today. Lost this afternoon to Carnegie Mellon, who's also nationally ranked. And the NCAA selection committee will announce its picks tomorrow for not only the, the seating and the bids, but the host sites for the NCAA Division III soccer tournament. There's a chance that if Case hosts, that will bump our game time next week back a bit. Stay tuned. Perone, heaving it left. This is Crum. He's got a first down ridden out at the 45. Case men's soccer losing today to CMU, the number 23 team in the country. Number eight Spartans with a chance to host an NCAA playoff game. We'll see if they earned enough goodwill leading into today's game to make the committee ignore the loss today. Perone on the play action. Rainbow down the middle. Moretti, jump ball. He's got it for a first down. The ball may be a little short. Moretti ran under it and made the leaping grab. Up and over Nick Kadlesic. That's a heck of a catch. The fourth quarter has been Waynesburg's time to shine offensively. This one a little out of reach, but still a chance for them to Grease the wheels, get some points on the board, and 
Get some practice in ahead of a tough week next week against W&J. Looks like they've found Pater, and they have. Dorian Hardy on a little toss by Perone. The Spartans defensive secondary with this B unit just not on the same page, and Hardy was left wide open for six. That's about as easy a pitch and catch as you can find. Perone into the arms of Dorian Hardy, who picks up his first touchdown of the year, the sophomore out of Taylor Alderdice High School. This is Guthrie. And that's good. Justin Fan was coming in hot. So Waynesburg now with 17 on the board. Spartans in the lead, 41 to 17. Case will get another crack likely with Coolidge. Perone with his first touchdown pass of the day. Scott Bauman with the other TD for Waynesburg. On a rush. As we take a look at the Spartan marching band, they are bundled up. We are a little spoiled on Press Road today. We don't have to have quite the uh, the layers that the folks down there have. We're about as warm as the players who've been running around all day. Looks like it'll be Mike Ryle to kick it away. We've been helped out today too by the sun. Even the folks I think downstairs who have had the layers on been able to shed a few because of the sunshine. That ball picked up inside the 20 yard line by Nate Stefanski. He'll take it out to near the 29. Waynesburg with a big bounce back year this year. Last year was a tough one. They were two and eight overall, two and six in the PAC. Speaking with head coach Chris Smithley, the head of the game this week, he was, as a graduate of Waynesburg, so proud of how this program has come along in the last two years. Coolidge on the option will keep it himself. Gets about four. John Glenn Davis on the stop. After a two and eight year last year, they're at 500 coming into today. And one of the X factors for Coach Smithley, he says last year we'd be in those situations where we'd be down in the fourth quarter and we just couldn't get it done. And this year they have. Three fourth quarter comebacks leading to three of their four wins. And the other one, they had to come from behind after an early deficit scoring 21 unanswered. Coolidge, near side, a little bit low, but scooped up. That's a first down. Tyler Smith knocking Mario Robina out of bounds near the 40 yard line. This is a really athletic Waynesburg team and a fairly young team too. You look at guys like Smith, a junior, he'll be back as the leader of this defense next year. Likely taking over that defensive captain role from the senior John Glenn Davis. Chris Smithley says is the heartbeat of this team. Coolidge dropping back, looking right, throwing low, caught for a first. And the grab on the low throw by Zipko. Adam Zipko with his first target and reception today. One of the things you look up and down this roster for Waynesburg, they've got a lot of multi-sport athletes, and I'm not just talking about guys who played multiple sports in high school. Most of their players Played three sports in high school, and some of them are multi-sport athletes at Waynesburg. Got a handful of guys on the wrestling team, a couple on the track and field team as well. Slithering forward and good enough for a first down there. Nate Stefanski. He's got himself out to the 34 in the ground game, working well for Case. The second unit offensively 
against the number one defensive unit for Waynesburg. The case first down. J.P. Wassman checks in at fullback. Stefanski is still the lone tailback. This is Stefanski again to the 30. A lot of pride for Chris Smithley in this Waynesburg program. Prior to his stint as the head coach of Waynesburg, he was with a pretty good program at WNJ, the other top dog in this conference as an assistant coach there. He'd been a graduate assistant here at Waynesburg as well. Coolidge from the shotgun on second and seven. Stefanski, nothing doing there. Cody Edwards in on the stop. Edwards a good example of versatile and athletic guys. Edwards last year was called on to play not only defensive line but offensive line for this team. Third and eight from the 32. Coolidge in the shotgun. On third and long, he has time, tosses it up. It is tipped and incomplete. Nice defense by Danver Hovsik, knocking that one away from Hunter Tulloch. Decent protection for Coolidge. It kind of collapsed at the end, but enough for him to get a ball off that was in a, a decent area, maybe a bit short. And Verhovsik came back on it and made the play. Fourth and eight from the 32. Punt time for Chase Witte. And Jawan Jones back to return. Timeout. Waynesburg. And we'll get a Waynesburg first timeout. Of the half. So each team has now used a timeout in this second half. Case trying to put this one away. They will give up the football with 337 to go and a 41-17 lead. Keep it right here as the Spartans return from a quick timeout. Just a short breather. Chase Witte will punt this one away to Jawan Jones. Witte won the job as the punter this past spring. Another guy who is a two-way punter. Jacob Burke, the running back last year, Handled the punting duties the last few seasons. And Witte, who will line up at wide receiver and handle kick returns, will punt this year and has punt this year. But that one kind of off the side of his foot and not a great one. Out of bounds to the 23. Tyler Perone to lead this Waynesburg offense back on the field. Today was just a, a case of the Spartans being able to outlast Waynesburg. This was a close game early. And once the Spartans offense got rolling, it steamrolled the Yellow Jackets. Perone, far side to Jawan Jones, and it's caught at the 30. I think if you were to talk to the Spartans ahead of this week, they would probably say if, if this game becomes a shootout, they're pretty comfortable in that. Waynesburg not noted for its offense, they're noted for its pass defense. And if this game became an offensive show, the Spartans have a, a few more tools and a few more weapons that they can utilize. And that was kind of the case today. After an early back and forth, the teams traded field goals in the opening drives. Then traded touchdowns, and really, since the 82-yard drive that ended the first half and resulted in a go-ahead Spartan touchdown by Justin Fan, it's been all case. Kick 
Case has outscored Waynesburg 31 to 7 in that span, including that drive. From a 10 10 tie to a 41 to 17 lead. First down for Waynesburg. 2.05 left to play in regulation. Again, next week, the Spartans back at home, finishing up with the Academic Bowl, the 33rd annual rivalry matchup against the Carnegie Mellon University Tartans, right now scheduled for a 2 o'clock kickoff. Next week at DeSanto Field, long ball to Grishaber, tipped incomplete. Oh, it was batted around and fell to the turf. Initially knocked down by Stephen Clark. And then Cooper Tulloch had a chance on the rebound. Just couldn't readjust. Had it in the right hand and it fell to the turf. Intended target, Bobby Grishaber. No dice. A second and 10 from the 35. Case will be watching Waynesburg's game next week intently as well. If Case wins and Waynesburg beats Washington and Jefferson, the Spartans not only win the PAC title outright, but they get the automatic qualifier to the NCAA tournament. Spartans have to take care of their own business next week against Carnegie Mellon. Aside having a down year, but certainly with the ability to challenge this case team. Third and six from the 39. Perone, Grishaber bobbles and drops it. It's fourth down. Last year, of course, the Spartans reached the NCAA playoffs for the fourth time in program history. Winning their first PAC title. They shared it with W&J last year as well because they didn't play W&J. This year with Thomas Moore College leaving the pack. They're an even 10 team, so everybody plays everybody. And the league, the league schedule expanded to nine games. Last year, the Spartans made it to the NCAA tournament and had a big road win. 28-0 upsetting Time out. Illinois Wesleyan Waynesburg, in the first round. First of playoff the win since 2007 and the second in school history. Eventually knocked off to end the year by the great Mount Union program. Another timeout. Before we finish things off, a minute and six left. Next week, if you are intent on watching that Waynesburg, Washington Jefferson game, it's slated to start a half hour ahead of ours. 1.30 start between Waynesburg and right now number 19 W and J. Spartans have nobody back to receive this punt. Nick Gibson will boot it away to empty space. And Waynesburg will down it. That was Dan Verhovsik to down it with 56 seconds remaining. Last year's academic bowl on the road at Carnegie Mellon. Probably the greatest show of the year last season. A back and forth, knockdown, drag out affair that the Spartans ended up winning. One of the biggest plays in that game, Justin Fan with a block punt touchdown at the end of regulation. To keep the Spartans hopes alive for a shared PAC title and an NCAA qualifying bid. And this one to end it. Case 41, Waynesburg 17. And this one now in the books. After the last knee by Ryan Coolidge, 
the Spartans on the back of another great offensive performance by Drew Saxton improve their 2018 mark to 8 and 1, 7 and 1 in the PAC, a 41-17 victory over Waynesburg at DeSanto Field this afternoon.